Okay, just a minute, give me a minute. Okay, do you listen to us? Is it okay, the sound? Good. Good. Okay, so uh, I would like to welcome you all to this uh, series of webinars. The webinars are um, designed in the frames of a project, of Erasmus Plus project, which, uh, which title is Life on Mars. It has to do with um, science and how to make science more attractive to, to little people, to students mainly. Uh, and what is more uh, interesting than arts. So we will use the arts and artistic techniques to, to, to make science more uh, digestible, let's say, to young people. Uh, before I continue, I would like to introduce you the coordinators of the of this project, which is Caserma Archaeologica, is an uh, institute in uh, northern Italy. And if Ilaria and Alice are listening to us, please introduce yourself, say what you're doing, and then I will mute you all, <laughs> and we will start. Okay, hello everybody. I'm Alice from Caserma Archaeologica. I want to introduce you to Ilaria. She's the president of the association and she will introduce uh, all uh, the project. Oh no, I'm muted to the project. We don't listen to you very clearly. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for participating in our Uh, good afternoon and welcome, welcome everyone. Thank you for participating in our call. I am Ilaria Margutti, president of the Caserma Archaeological Association, and I wish you and uh, I wish you all good work. Uh, sorry, but uh, my English is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Ilaria is a great artist. You will see more about her in the end, in the last webinar. And uh, in September, in the workshops, the live workshops, face-to-face -face workshops that we are going to, to have here, you will be all informed about them later. So let's officially start. I am Yasmi Stathi. Many of you know me. I'm the head of education uh, at the Natural History Museum of Crete. And um, behind that, I am a biologist and I study scorpions. And my colleague here, who is next to me, that's why we have uh, the microphones a little bit <laughs> close, Elena Hudetsanagi. And uh, she's a pedagogist and uh, she's my right hand here at the lab. So you will uh, have more about her on the second part of the um, presentation. So our first webinar is the first from the three, two more will follow. We will try to show you a um, scientific issue that uh, many kids are uh, fond of, which is the wolf, or in general, a wild animal and how this wild animal is um, transcripted somehow in fairy tales and uh, how this um, animal has inspired uh, people, writers, uh, artists, etc. So I, ah, I forgot to tell you that this project is one part is science, which is the hardcore of science, and the other part is the 
more attractive part, which is the, the art that hugs the science. So today the scientific, uh, not so interested maybe thing will be represented by me and the artistic part from uh, Elena. So I will show you a little bit about the, the wild animal of wolf and how, how it looks like, what it eats and uh, where does it live if it is in danger, etc. And then uh, we will show you a way of how all this scientific uh, information could be more attractive to kids mainly. So before we start, I would like to I would like you to think if you listen, if you hear the word the word wolf, what do you feel? What words come come first to your mind? And I would like you to answer that. I will give you the link where you can enter in the chat here. And Or you could scan, I don't know if uh, the QR code is easier for you to scan it. Let's. Uh, send it to you as a file. And then we will see what your answers are. Now you see all my secrets here. Okay. Hmm. We have some questions, some answers. Wild, fear, hungry, dangerous. Hmm. Interesting. Salut, <laughs> Riha, good. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So this is what a wolf represents to you. Fear, says somebody. Danger. Yes, all of it. Let's see how it, it really looks like. I don't know if anybody, any of you has seen a wild wolf in nature, but most of you will have seen a wolf dog. Actually, that resembles a lot. So about the ears, it can hear very, very well, up to 10 to, to 16 kilometers. And it can see even the slightest movement in the little light. This enables this animal to see and, and hunt at dusk and dawn, so with uh, no sun. And uh, what interesting is that when it is uh, young, it has blue eyes, and when it is uh, adult and older, it has yellow eyes. And of course, it sees uh, fewer colors than humans. About the nose, it has an incredible sense of smell. It can smell from many, many distance, many big distance. It has very strong jaws and 42 large teeth. Its fur it, during the winter is very dense and fluffy and it has long and stiff hair. And this uh, fur is plugged in spring. And when fall comes, it grows again to be prepared for the a new winter. About the tail, the tail is a signal for the wolves. As you know, the wolves um, live in plug, in uh, packs, in herds, many together in societies. So the first male or female holds the tail up, which is a sign of uh, leadership. 
When the wolf wants to show submission, then it has the tail between the legs. In Greek, we have evale tinurasta skelia, which is a very uh, direct saying for that. About the legs, it has long legs, and for short distances, it can run up to 56 kilometers per hour. If it has to move for long distances, it has it can walk for about eight nine kilometers per hour, and uh, it can cover more than eighty kilometers per day. And what helps uh, what helps it for that is that the, its chest is very is narrow, so when it runs, the hind legs can come up to the. Uh, front leg to, to the front of the body so it can speed up. So this is the wolf as it is a natural a wild animal in nature. Now what else can we say about this? Look at these teeth. This animal I could ask you <laughs> what it eats. Here is the chat. What it eats? What it should eat? What do you think? Roots and plants and uh, leaves and flowers. We have some answers. Huh. Carnivore meat. Correct. It has big teeth and very sharp teeth. So, of course, it eats meat, actually. It is a carnivorous animal. And uh, what can it eat? Of course, it can eat what it can find in the forest. Correct? So, what it could find in the forest? It could find deer or hare, small mammals or badgers or squirrels. But then, how much food does it need? How many hair, for example, is are enough for one wolf per day, let's say? Let's see. As for the deer, one is enough. For the hare, two. For the badger and the smaller uh, mammals, three and four, and it goes on to mice more, etc. So this is... Um, keep this picture in your mind because it will help you understand a video that we will show later. That one wolf can control the population of all these herbivorous animals. So, uh, where does it live? It lives, of course, in the forest. As you see here, in Crete, we don't have wolves, but we have in uh, northern Greece. And uh, I would like you, I would like to show you a video, very interesting one, to see um, the response of the danger. What I mean, in uh, many places of the world, the wolf is in danger and it is under extinction. So there are many um, initiatives, NGOs, etc., that protect the wildlife and protect the wolf. And there was, um, some years ago, there was an attempt to reintroduce wolf, wild populations of wolf, in a big park in North uh, United States, Yellowstone Park. So I would like you to watch this video. And here I would like to say that the presentation will be uploaded and you will be able to watch it. So in case you cannot understand or cannot hear the video now uh, well, you could see it yourself later because this is the link. So let's find... the video here it is write to us if you have any uh, sound problems elena is checking the chat as i understand all the time 
So the title is a little bit strange. How wolves change rivers? Are wolves uh, capable of changing the rivers? Well, what had happened in Yellowstone is that after the um, extinction of wolves there, the herbivore mammals, deers and whatever, grew up so big and their populations were so big that they ate all the plants around. So there was a big problem with the river banks, no trees to hold the soil, etc. So now you will watch something that shows how this situation was reversed just by introducing the wolves. One of the most exciting scientific findings of the past half century has been the discovery of widespread trophic cascades. A trophic cascade is an ecological process which starts at the top of the food chain and tumbles all the way down to the bottom. And the classic example is what happened in the Yellowstone National Park in the United States when wolves were reintroduced in 1995. Now, we, we all know that wolves kill various species of animals, but perhaps we're slightly less aware that they give life to many others. Sounds strange, but, but just, just follow me for a while. Uh, before the wolves turned up, they'd been absent for 70 years. That The numbers of deer, because there was nothing to hunt them, had built up and built up. They'd managed to reduce much of the vegetation there to almost nothing. They'd just grazed it away. But as soon as the wolves arrived, even though they were few in number, they started to have the most remarkable effects. First, of course, they killed some of the deer, but that wasn't the major thing. Much more significantly, they radically changed the behavior of the deer. The deer started avoiding certain parts of the park, the places where they could be trapped most easily, particularly the valleys and the gorges and immediately those places started to regenerate. In some areas, the height of the trees quintupled in just six years. Bare valley sides quickly became forests of aspen and willow and cottonwood. And as soon as that happened, the birds started moving in. The number of songbirds and migratory birds started to increase greatly. Otters and muskrats and ducks and fish and reptiles and amphibians. The wolves killed coyotes, and as a result of that, the number of rabbits and mice began to rise, which meant more hawks, more weasels, more foxes, more badgers. Ravens and bald eagles came down to feed on the carrion that the wolves had left. Bears fed on it too, and their population began to rise as well, partly also because there were more berries growing on the regenerating shrubs. But here's where it gets really interesting. The wolves changed the behavior of the rivers. They began to meander less. There was less erosion. The, the cha channels narrowed. More pools formed. More riffle sections, all of which were great for wildlife habitats. The rivers changed in response to the wolves. And the reason was that the regenerating forests stabilized the banks so that they collapsed less often, so that the rivers became more fixed in their course. Similarly, by driving the deer out of some places and the vegetation recovering on the, on the valley sides, there was a soil erosion because the vegetation stabilized that as well. So the wolves, small in number, transform not just the ecosystem of the Yellowstone National Park, this huge area of land, but also its physical geography. So let's make a let's make a break two minutes up to now. Um, what about 
the video the video that you that you watched and uh, did everybody watch it was it clear yep good so did you understand the connections between all these animals and all this environment one uh, link is missing and everything is collapsed so how can we show this to little children that was our next question because you the wolf balance the environment yes i can see now the chat elena do we have any chat for questions for answering because unfortunately i cannot uh, watch the chat okay so we wanted to show this aspect to little kids little kids know the wolf from the fairy tales and everybody knows that the fairy tales are a big issue so let's see what happens to the fairy tales <laughs> Here are in Greek, but I guess that in other countries also you have uh, similar fairy tales, the wolf and the seven little goats, the three piggies, the liar uh, shepherd, a very sweet wolf, a, ver a good hearted wolf, the wolf who fell from his book, etc. There are so many and so many fairy tales on wolf. So, hmm. Again, the Mentimeter, if you had just a minute to put the next here, if you had to start a fairy tale once upon a time, there was a wolf. How would you describe your wolf? Think about it. Now that you know the animal wolf and from a biology perspective, I would like to mention here that in nature there are not good or bad animals or plants. Everyone has its place in nature and everyone has a role in the balance of nature. So good, bad, etc. are uh, when we say for whom is good or for whom is bad. For example, for the deer, Maybe it's bad because it eats it. But for the yellow stone, after in the end, it was a good thing to introduce wolves. So good and bad is very rel relative uh, concepts. But if you had to write a book about a fairy tale, about a wolf, what, how would you describe your wolf character? Let's see. Now, brave. And proud and loving. Uh, some microphones are open. I muted everybody. So, unappreciated. Hmm, interesting. And while you are thinking about your wolf and your character, the character that it will have in the in your fairy tale, I would like you to show. I would like to show you what we did, how to approach this wolfy concept to the kids. We created. Um, a stop motion animation a little movie and i would like to show you this because afterwards elena will show you step by step how you will be able to create something similar to that let's see the balancer hmm. interesting i will share all your answers with you so now I would like you to see another video. Uh, for me, it will be the last, I promise. And then we will have 
some chatting. So we have created this a story for wolves. It's in Greek, but it has uh, English um, subtitles. So we, it is a story of, well, I will not say, you will watch it yourself. Θέλετε τώρα να φτιάξουμε μια δική μας ιστορία για λύκους. Και πώς αρχίζουν τα παραμύθια. Μια φορά και ένα καιρό. Σε ένα όμορφο δάσος. Ζούσε ένας λύκος. Πάμε να δούμε την ιστορία μας. Ο λύκος των παραμυθιών και της φύσης. Μια φορά και έναν καιρό, σε ένα όμορφο δάσο ζούσε ένας λύκος. Όταν πεινούσε όλο και κάτι έβρισκε να φάει, σκιουράκια, λαγούς, καθώς τριγύριζε παρέα με τους φίλους του και πεινούσε πιο πολύ, παραμόνευε να πιάσει κάτι πιο χορταστικό, όπως να. Ένα ζαρκάδι. Πολλά ζωά ζούσαν στο δάσος. Ήταν όλα τους χαρούμενα. Είχαν καλή παρέα και άφθονο φαγητό. Τι απολαυστική η ζωή στο δάσος. Μια μέρα την ώρα που τα ζώα έτρωγαν αμέριμνα και οι λύκοι είχαν βγει για κυνήγι ακούστηκε ξαφνικά Τα πουλιά φτεροκόπησαν μακριά από τις φωλιές τους Τα ζώα ξαφνιασμένα έτρεξαν να κρυφτούν Ένας λύκος έτρεξε γρήγορα μακριά Στο δάσος δεν ακουγόταν τίποτα πια η ώρα πέρασε. Τα ζώα ξεθάρεψαν και βγήκαν από τις κρυψώνες τους. Είχαν αρχίσει να πεινάνε. Τότε είδαν πως η λύκη δεν ήταν πια ζωντανή. Και ο καιρός περνούσε. Τα ζώα άρχισαν να πληθαίνουν. Δεν υπήρχαν πια στο δάσος λύκοι για να φάνε μερικά. Κανένας δεν τα πείραζε. Ούτε αυτά, ούτε τα μικρά τους. Και έκαναν πολλά μικρά. Γέμισε το δάσο ζώα που πλήθαιναν και πλήθαιναν. Μεγάλων η παρέα. Περνούσαν ωραία, μα πεινούσαν κιόλας. Το φαΐ δεν έφτανε για όλους. Σιγά σιγά έφαγαν όλο το χορτάρι. Τα τρυφερά βλαστάρια από τους θάμνους. Τα φύλλα, το δάσος άρχισε να αλλάζει. Τι απέγινε όμως ο λύκος που αναγκάστηκε να εγκαταλείψει το δάσος του. Περιπλανήθηκε μέρες ψάχνοντας καταφύγιο. Κουράστηκε, πείνασε. Δεν είχε άλλες δυνάμεις. Μμμ, μυρίζει ζαρκάδι. Μπροστά του απλώνεται ένα καταπράσινο δάσος. Λίγο ακόμα αν τρέξει θα πιάσει κάτι να φάει να δυναμώσει. Μα τι έγινε, χάθηκε νόστιμη μυρωδιά. Ο ουρανός γέμισε καπνούς. Δυσκολεύεται να αναπνεύσει. Τρέχει να απομακρυνθεί από τις φλόγες και τους καπνούς. Ασφαλής πια, αποκοιμιέται νηστικός και αποκαμωμένος. Ξυπνώντας βλέπει στάχτες και κάρβονα παντού. Και τώρα θα πεθάνει της πείνας. Αλλά να, μυρίζει κάτι νόστιμο. Μα θα τολμούσε να διακινδυνεύσει τη ζωή του αν είχε βρει φαΐ στο δάσος. Τι θα γίνει ο λύκος της ιστορίας μας? Θα παραμείνει... Ε, τι θα γίνει ο λύκος της ιστορίας μας?
Όπως βλέπετε, με αυτό το βιντεάκι, δύο λεπτά να ανοίξω, ωραία. Με αυτό το βιντεάκι, που θα δείτε πάλι το link, σε, αν κάποιος δεν κατάφερε λόγω σύνδεσης να το παρακολουθήσει, ε, τα παιδιά έρχονται πολύ πιο κοντά στο τι ακριβώς συμβαίνει με τη ζωή του λύκου. Και γιατί αναγκάζεται ο λύκος να κατέβει στις στάνες στη Βόρεια Ελλάδα που τον κυνηγάνε, όταν δεν βρίσκει φυσικά φαγητό στο χώρο του και στο δάσος του, θα κατέβει και θα έρθει στους ανθρώπους κοντά. Και αυτό είναι που μας ανησυχεί εμάς. Α, sorry. Συγγνώμη. I'm sorry about my Greek. Anyway, let's say that again. So, with this uh, little film that uh, this was created with a stop, with a stop motion uh, technique, uh, the little kids, especially the kindergarten kids, uh, understand very, very well and very clear the whole story about the wolves and how they are uh, pressed somehow to come to the people's shelter, to the um, shepherd's house, to eat the sheep and goat. Because if they found food in their own environment, of course they will, would not risk their lives to come towards to humans. So if they are let alone in their environment, then we will be also secure from these wild animals because it's a wild animal it's not a pet so if they find uh, food and shelter in their place everybody will be happy so before we uh, go to elena's next part of this webinar i would like to hear you and to ask any questions, any comments, if you want to discuss something, just raise your hand and we will find you. Mm, okay. Uh, we don't. We don't. Uh, we have a question in chat about the if the audience is from Crete. So not all the audience is from Crete. They are from several places and Crete. And um, the wolf is a general uh, model animal, let's say, because it is well studied and you can uh, teach the reintroduction, the wilderness, the, um, uh, all these issues about the destruction of environment and um, um, and disappearance of a species, and then how to reintroduce and how to show the results of this reintroduction with this model animal. That's why we use it. And also because it is a fairy tale uh, mascot. It's everywhere in, in so many fairy tales. Uh, for people who are going to work in Crete, there are, uh, for example, there is the wild cat of Crete, which is uh, being studied lately with photo traps. And there are, if you... If you visit the site of our museum, uh, there uh, are uh, several videos and uh, information on this research that is going on now. And also, if you need any help from Crete or from other places, not only Crete, then you can also ask us here in the museum and we will provide any help we could. Yes. Thank you, Constantinos Wildcat. The video was realistic and beautiful, so it is very important to preserve the biotopes for all species, of course. And now I, I would like to make a personal comment as a biologist and a, 
a person who thinks that humans are not the center of the universe. For <laughs> I believe that if we give our students and our kids this idea that we are part of the whole sphere and of the whole system and not just the top of it, controlling everything, then our lives will be much better. This is my personal opinion and this is what I would like to give to other people as well. Hmm. So thank you for the comments. The five-year-old uh, kid really understood. That's the concept, to give the new people the, the whole, all this scientific uh, uh, information that I gave you in the beginning. It's not very digestible from little kids. So the little kids will get more messages from a video like that than giving them information and information and talking a lot. So if you don't have any question to me, I would like to pass on to Elena. About the importance of all animals in the night. Here and now we have a good number of wolves, but also there, but also there, Ah, uh, yes, huh. it's the same story everywhere. Yes, for example, here in North Greece, in the Dadia forest last year was burned. So many animals had to live or were dead. Anyway, if the animals who lived there don't find food, of course they will visit our villages. It's This is a normal thing to do. Even people do the same, not only animals. Exactly, a lot of illegal killing of wolves. Yes, there are so many problems, but, and not only for wolves, for bears as well uh, in North Greece. In uh, Crete, we had a big problem with uh, birds of prey. Many people from Crete might um, remember the vultures and the bearded vulture that the shepherds thought that these vultures take the little sheep and eat them. It took us more than 15 years here in the museum to persuade the shepherds and the people who live on the mountains that no, the vultures eat dead meat, only dead meat and not living sheep. So yes, we need to translate the science into an easy, way for people to understand. This is very important. That's why we're here. Good. So, Elena. Yes. Would you like to, to start? Yes, but first I would like to have some minutes in order to make some adjustments with my presentation. So if you want to take uh, two or three minutes of a break so we can do what uh, we need with Yasmin and we are ready. Okay, see you in the... Before uh, that, while we are uh, waiting, I would like to tell you that um, in order to take the certificate in the end, Elena will show you also in the final uh, slide, or me, I don't remember, me. <laughs> you will have to fill in a form because we need your names in uh, English and in Greek so that we will be able to create the certificates. So please don't forget in the end, we will send you the link in the chat and in the presentation that will be available after the... Yes, I will send you the link in the end, in the chat. And uh, there will be also in the presentation that we will uh, share also. For the videos, the videos are in the... Okay, just a minute, I can send you... Mm, the link for the wolf for the wolf stop animation is here and the link for the yellow stone 
video is here. Okay. That's it. So, Elena will start in a minute. In two minutes. Yes. Να ρωτήσω κάτι. Ναι, πείτε μας. Ε, το link που στείλατε τώρα. Ε, δεν βλέπετε. Πού το στείλα. Α, ah, just a minute. Yes, yes. <laughs> to all it has to be. To everyone. Now, yes. Now you see it. Okay. This is for the wolf stop animation, and this is for the Yellowstone. But if you search, you will find many about the Yellowstone. It is a case study for many people. Okay. Yeah. Now you're talking. No, not yet. <laughs> Give me some time. Let's go to the first one. Good. I'll open it. I want to see it. <laughs> yes. If someone else is up. And if I want to be muted from here, yeah. Uh, So, if you are ready, are we all here? Shall we wait one more minute? Huh? Let's start. Okay, you, you, you can listen to me, let's see. Yes, good. So, let's make a stop motion animation video. But first, I would like to ask uh, what is a stop motion animation video? So let's start with a definition. According to Cambridge Dictionary, a stop motion animation video is moving images, well, are moving images created by filming an object and moving it slightly between each frame. You move the object slightly and you click move the object and click. And according to NFI, which is Nashville Film Institute, I have written it down because I couldn't remember what it is. It is stop motion is an animated filming technique, filmmaking technique in which a physical object, a physical object, not an AI, it's not artificial intelligence. It is something that we can uh, catch 
is moved in small increments, increments in positions, small positions every time, and photographed at every step. When these images are stringed together and played rapidly, the things in them appear to carry on their own. Is that clear so far? Uh, stop motion video, it's not artificial intelligence. It's not something that you will make in your, on your computer and then you will uh, create a video. It's something that you have to set the scene and uh, have figures, uh, have a scenario and click many photos so you can have at the end a video. But let's take it one step at a time. So this is my friend Tip, my yellow friend. I called him Tip and he will help me explain you what we should do to have a stop motion video. First of all, we have to make a supply list. The first uh, and most important is the idea and the scenario. Do I have an idea uh, uh, what I want to show, what I want to do, what I want to say through my story? Okay, I'm making some notes. Uh, now, I have to make a scene. Where is this story takes place? Is it a forest? Is it an ocean? Is it a living room? I have to decide. Uh, third, uh, I have to pick up my figures and my characters and how I will, I will present them in the film. Fourth, very important, a lamp <laughs> or more. Uh, five, a camera, cell phone or tablet with a camera. Sixth, a tripod, tripod. Very useful, still optional, and I will explain what I mean uh, in a while. And last but not least, a program, a computer program or an application, a phone application, uh, that where I can edit my video and create my stop motion film. So far, so good. Hmm? Shall I move on? Yes, me? Yes. Yes, good. Uh, there is somebody in the chat saying okay. that some are really great. The night will be for Christmas. Yes, yes, there yes. Are so many and great movies. Okay. Don't, Don't expect, expect to, to create, create a nightmare, nightmare before, before Christmas. Christmas in yeah. Yeah. Huh. Wait <laughs> to the <laughs> end of my presentation. Ελίνα, δεν σε ακούμε καλά. Τώρα, Αθανασία, can you hear me? Yes. Good. It was, uh, the volume was turned down a little bit. So now, my dear uh, Tim Bartons, <laughs> I want to ask you a question. Uh, which of the tasks you see in, on the screen uh, do you find, uh, do you believe it will be the most challenging one? Would it be to set a scene, to find or make the figures, to create a scenario, to make a video? I have also made a menti, which I'm about to copy paste on the, uh, wait a minute, how I'm going, I'm going to do it that? Uh, to copy paste it on the chat so you can answer that question and see what do you think uh, just a minute yes we learn we always learn yes let's see no to everyone no to everyone yes Good. Okay, you can see the code you should use here. I um I also um I have to uh, you asked me I have to uh, click present in order to yeah. see the results. Yeah, just yeah, just a minute. Excuses. Perfect. Present. Good. Let us see. 
Great. I added, I also added last minute uh, addition, photograph, photographing. Someone might find difficult to make all these uh, shots. I think the most basic is to write the script. Two, scenario, yes, first is making the video, third is the scenario. It's, it is changing all the time. Now the video is on top. That is the most difficult. So now how I shall move on. Huh? Mm -hmm. Click here. Good. Good, most of you said the video. Let's see if that changes by the end of the presentation. Now, the story. First, you start with an idea. You write down the idea on a storyboard. What is a storyboard? A storyboard is a very helpful tool. It, it has this shape. Uh, I will um, paste it uh, uh, in the chat, but it is easy. You can draw it by yourself, but I, I'm going to give it to you. Good. Thank you, Yasmin. So a storyboard is where we can write uh, our main idea and then share and uh, the action between the scenes. How many scenes will I have? Will I have Two, will I have three? Will I have four? Where is the action taking place? Uh, where I will show my character's feelings? Uh, it is very helpful and it, uh, because you can organize your thoughts and you can see if what you, uh, the message you, you want to convey is it can stick or it can um, show through your scenario. After that, sketch the scenes of your story and name them. Name them. It's a good one. If you put names, you put your mind in order. Your ideas are organized now, and you can you you can move on by collecting the figures. Okay, now we have our story. Based on our story, we can use the type of figures we like and that are, are suitable for our story. We can use as figures toys. Playmobiles, animals, cars, um, those Lego figures, Minecraft, etc. We can create our own clay figures if we are uh, handy and uh, we like uh, crafts. We can do it. We can make paper figures, which is the most. Um, it's the most famous technique and and the easiest. Cut some fi the, the figures, you have the scene most and the, the, the most common, yes, thank you. The most common uh, technique. And uh, it's easy to move them on the scene because we uh, can use some blue tag on paper tape and uh, uh, stick them on the scene. Or any other type of figure you can imagine and it doesn't come to my mind. Now, tip says that maybe you will not need any, need any figures. Uh, what did he thought when he said, what did he think when he, well, when he said that? He think that you might click your hands holding a brush and making a painting and, and draw the story. You don't need anything. You need your hands and the brush and someone to click <laughs> the camera. Uh, or, uh, you might embroider a, a, a piece of art, let's say. Now, make your own clay figures. The, there is one technique, which is the one we see with the deer right here, with the wire and the paper tape giving shape on the figure, and then cover the whole um, our figure with clay. We wait for it to dry and then we color it. Or you can, if you are handicraft enough, you can do this. I hope it will open. No, it will not open. Yes, oh, it yes, will. it will. It is. Good. 
I like it. Pinterest is a very good catalog of idea. Very good. You can find many things in Pinterest and you can create your own boards. And any, every time uh, you need an inspiration, uh, you're searching for new ideas. You can run to Pinterest, create an account and have your boards there and uh, have everything in order. I don't know if it's, it has any sound. And, ah, it was very, very loud. Good. Okay, she didn't need any wire or heat, any wire or paper tape. He just grabbed the clay and made this figure. Okay, uh, excuse me. All right, let's move on with the paper figures. I, I really like this bear here. And it is an example of stop motion video with a paper figure. So enjoy my friend bear. Come on, you can do it. Oh, here. Yes. Yes, we will win. Okay. Good. Uh, let me send you, Yasmin said to send you now the um, link so you can have it immediately and not waiting for the presentation. Let's see here. Good. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Or use toy figures, as I said before. The possibilities are endless and depends on the scenario. Yeah. Now, set the scene. Uh, you can draw the scene or you can print the scene. There are plenty of uh, uh, environments and uh, drawings that you can print and make them your background. Otherwise, you can build the scene using some Legos uh, <laughs> or other um, uh, or boxes or uh, cupboards, anything. Uh, you can use craft materials to create your unique set of actions. And as I said before, you can you might be the next Tim Burton. So unleash the artist in you and make experiments and explore your, your um, the possibilities. Ah, oh, you cannot hear. Now, can you hear me now? Yes. Is it okay? Yes, good. Now, my friend Tip is saying that at the end of the presentation, you will find many valuable resources attached for you to explore. Okay, good. Now, some useful materials. Blue tag, model clay, clothes pins in a tamadalakia, paper tape, wire, flashlight, craft papers, papers in general, scissors, markers, color pencils, a glue stick, etc. You can use them at all the, <laughs> during all the proce procedure to um, uh, stabilize your camera, to stabilize your scene, to stabilize um, the figures. And I will show you uh, through a video what I mean later on. Now we have done everything. We've done our script. We have made our uh, scene. We chose our figures. Now we have to choose uh, the device we will work with. Uh, you can have your phone, a camera, 
on a tablet. It is better uh, and more relaxing to use a tripod or a base where you can uh, set the device and have your hands free to control everything and not to have in mind the camera. And here Tip says that it's important to have a steady camera. You can use a tripod, or if you don't have a tripod, you can use uh, a frame mount. You can build something uh, with Legos, uh, with cupboards, uh, uh, something steady. It is helpful because you can uh, uh, use your hands, as I said before. If you don't have any of these options available, now you can stabilize your camera with a, with a tape or the clothes pins or small heavy objects like books, etc. cetera. Uh, control lightning, it's very important. Block natural lightning because uh, the sun is very beautiful. Sun's, sunlight is uh, very beautiful and warm light, but uh, out of the sudden, a cloud might uh, come in front of the sun and uh, you have to, um, uh, it, it will change the light in your uh, frames. And this is a problem later. Choose a table lamp. I would say two or two it's better for controlled and artificial lighting. Mind the shadows. While you're clicking, uh, your shadow might be um, appear in the, on the scene. So uh, watch where you will be standing while you're um, taking the photos. Okay, fixed stage. <laughs> Stabilize the stage with blue tag or paper tape. Why we say that? Because the stage might collapse the moment we are clicking and we're taking our frames and we are in a very good way to make our um, our video. Now, do I have time to show this video too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some useful tips. Uh, we won't watch it all. We watch. Uh, we will watch a part of it. And αυτό συνοδεύεται. Και αυτή είναι η επιχείρησή του. Ένα μέρος που είναι όσοι η εμπειρία. Legos. In this video, I'm going to show you the top. Here you can see him. He uh, builds a uh, Lego base and he uses blue tag to stabilize the, uh, the cell phone. So he, he can be free and uh, click. 10 things with that you can no do to make your stop problems. motion animations look professional. Now, that now, is the, if you're that anything was like the me. one I wanted to show you now. The first. First of all, block don't want out to end up with natural light. Like because natural light flicker, changes, it might change while light. you're clicking. So close your blinds and or this is a problem. And try to block out as much of the daylight as possible. Mm -hmm. So you've blocked out the natural light, but you don't want is a quick Use a lamp. way to light up your set. You need to position it right, not too close, or you'll get a lot of glare. Using greaseproof paper can help to soften the light. And, and this, look at this, he uses a paper so that the, the light spreads equally on the scene. Evenly. To improve the lighting even more, try using more than one lamp and experiment until and another how lamp. it looks. And let's see how it looks better, I think. Your lighting may be looking Keep good, the camera the steady. We said that. The next step is to secure, secure your step, your step so it because it might collapse. <laughs> and bad things way is will happen. Tech. Use plenty of it under your base plates and under anything else. You put some that blue tag on the base. And everything the automatic are in settings position. on your camera can make the shot go in and out of focus or cause the lighting to change in ways you're not expecting. Ah, that's an important. It says not to, uh, you have to set the camera on manual settings. Don't leave the auto settings, manual settings, so, so you can make the adjustments and uh, look how the picture will look. Because how the picture will look, it's your video after all. The automatic settings. 
Yes, tiny movements. Using large movements between frames leads to choppy or jerky looking animation. To make your action look smooth, use lots yes. of tiny little movements like this. It takes a lot longer to do. Okay. But you quickly get used and to now it, and at this point I will product. stop with this. I think wear dark clothes. This might seem like an odd one, but if you wear a brightly colored top, yes. the reflected ah, light can often be the, seen. Uh, in your his shot. reflection Either is appearing reflection on the, the glasses or as a flicker or of a Lego scene. Choose so a dark wear gray or dark black clothes. Top to wear. And where you put Eight. the camera is really important. Ah, Avoid think about your really camera away, angles. Or pointing it away from the action. Because the, the um, result the might not look, the best look good. And remember that you may need to when you start Nine out in stop motion, realistic movements. your minifigures may slide instead of walking and may swing Let's their see. weapons awkwardly in your fight sequences. To animate action sequences like a pro, observe real life carefully <laughs> and learn from other people's mistakes and successes. So, bit of pain here. Of course, there will be times not when you want to use silly, but unrealistic actions. But you if might you learn how to it. mimic real life, you'll animate like, like a pro. this is one uh, good one with a fire. Stop motion and use sound effects and voice acting to help tell their story. After editing your video, you will use sound effects. Okay. And we covered all. Last but not least, says tip, choose the correct angle. Uh, the video told us so. Stick to the script. Since you have it, use it. Make short moves keep, and keep in mind that you need multiple shots to make a single move. 24, 24 photos per second. Adjust the zoom correctly. And remember, the right shot is the one that your hand is not in it. <laughs> <laughs> so after all these beautiful things, we are ready to go to the program that we will use to edit our video. Up to now, do you want anything to ask me? If not, I will move on. And now you will see how easy it is to make a stop motion video. Well, uh, we checked some applications, not a lot of them, some and uh, programs. Uh, and uh, I chose Filmora 13 because it was easier for me to use. And that's the only reason why I chose Filmora, not any other reason. The application for the camera. Excuse me? The application for the camera. I will tell it at the end. Okay. Lipon, Filmora is a free uh, program. You can download it for free on your computer. Here is the um, how it looks on the web and then you get, uh, get started for free, the install window appears. You install it. Ah, no, not yet. And after we install it, it is ready to use. But before it is ready to use, I would like to show, ah, Filmora has many, many tutorial videos on YouTube. So now here today we'll show uh, how to make a small stop motion video, but if you want to explore Filmora, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube and you can watch them and experiment uh, at your own pace. So, now Tip says that we can have a look at this video because it could be helpful for us. Well, we'll do. There is a lady from Filmora, I think. Yes, yes, here is our lady. Who will tell us? Who will tell us how we will create a stop motion video? Is it uh, okay? The sound. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create stop motion animation in Filmora 10. Keep watching. Hi everyone, it's Chloe from Watershare from Mark here to empower your inner video creator. Stop motion animation is a filmmaking technique in which objects are moved in small increments between photographs. You might have spotted stop motion being used in popular films like Carline and The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes. And while this technique requires plenty of time and patience, it's worth the effort. Today we'll use toy cars to create stop motion animation with items around as a home. Let's go! First, let's get our footage. We will need a tripod, a camera, and a place to use as a set. 
Sure. It's important that we don't have any natural light coming into the room of our set, so the sun doesn't change throughout while filming. We're using a desk for the ground and a poster board for the background. We also set up our camera on a tripod and place it in front of our subject, the toy cars. Make sure your camera is set to menu settings and menu focus, so you don't have to worry about them changing during the shoot. If you don't have a camera or tripod, that's fine. You can instead use your phone to take the shots. If you want to shoot at 24 frames per second, you will need to take 24 photos for one second of footage. This will be important later when we bring our footage into Filmora. If you want to learn more about frame rate with stop motion, check out our last stop motion video here. Now that we have our setup, we can start moving our subjects. For the smoothest animation, keep the movement between photos as small as possible. Move the car, then take a picture until you have finished your scene. It is important not to bump the tripod or change the light between photos. And finally, we will make sure to not cast shadows or reflections with our body as we take each photo. For a 10 second animation, we would need to capture 240 images which would take you a couple hours. Since we decided to shoot at 12 frames per second, we will only need around 120 photos. Now that we have our footage ready, let's print it into Filmora to create a stop motion animation. First, let's import our photos into Filmora 10. Next, we will go to File and then Preferences to visit the editing menu. If you shot in 24 frames per second, change the photo Please. duration to 0.02. Uh -huh. and 0.04 if you filmed in 12 frames per second. This will ensure that each photo you drag to the timeline is one frame long. Now we can drag all the photos we have into the timeline. And just like that, we're done! Watch back that smooth animation. Another one of our favorite tricks is to draw a picture bit by bit and photograph it each time. So, move the figures bit by bit and photograph them every time. Now, we have uh, all our pictures. Uh, in order to make um, stop motion animation, you need a lot of pictures. Uh, but don't be scared, you might not need uh, that many. It depends on what you want to do in the end. And I will tell you what I mean. Now, you have all the photos you need, okay? You save them in your computer, and now you have to check them out. Some of them might have your hand in it. Some of them uh, might uh, have the shadow, uh, the change of light. Something might go wrong. The, the scenery will collapse. Uh, you have to erase the bad ones because it is easier for you to move on later. Then you open Wondershare Filmora and uh, choose a new project right here. And, ta-da! <laughs> a very professional and black screen appears. <laughs> so, we go here, click here to import media. Uh, once we click here, uh, we'll go in our window where our photos are gathered all together. So, uh, we, Anigma in Estelnica, Stanglica, in open. We click on open. Ah, first of all, uh, you can check all uh, the photos by pressing Control uh, and A, or you can click on them one by one and uh, select them all and you click on open. Down here, you can see the tracks, picture in picture track. That is the place uh, where uh, your video will be after, but I will show you later what I mean. Now, once we open our photos, are all gathered in this window, not here, but in this window. Now, once again, we have to press Control and A to select the pictures or click on one by one. And then uh, we uh, choose File 
here is phi. Can you see it on my screen? Where is it's um, up on the two in the toolbar, which is file, and the window of file opens. Now we'll go to preferences. Once we go to preferences, the preferences window appears, and we go here on editing. On editing, there are. Excuse me. Can you all hear me? Is something wrong? Okay, okay. So, here on the editing part, we go to photo duration and we change and make the adjustments. Uh, for stop motion video, uh, the timing, the indicated time is uh, 0 0.03. Uh, me then, comma, me then, tria. It is very fast because uh, we uh, use too many frames, but that is an indicated number. You can make your experiments and choose your adjustments. And then apply. So once you apply, you click the first picture all of them are uh, selected. You don't have to pick them one by one. They are all selected. And you drag and drop the first picture in the first track here. Uh, here, you can see the number three. It is because Filmora has three video tracks open here. It it's, doesn't matter. It, it gives you the opportunity to have another video the, from the, to the track below. It is okay. You will choose one track. Okay. And then you will push play and your stop motion video will be ready. Now, to have your video and not be only uh, in Filmora, you have to click the export button. Here you can see it up there, the export button. Here it is, it's the step three. Once you click on the export button, you will have this window here. There is the local file, the device, the YouTube, TikTok, Vimeo, a DVD. Make your choice depending on where you want to upload your video, why you need your video, why, what do you want to do with it? Do you want it for YouTube? Do you want it for your class? You, you make your choice again, experiment. So for me, it was local. I made my choice and then I, I click on format MP4 and then export. Someone might need to go to YouTube. Pick YouTube and the YouTube window will open and make your choices and then export. Now, let's see what we've done by using, ah, here it gives today. Just a minute. Can we make it larger here? No. Here is my video. I will play it again. I'm sorry, but it is different once you share your presentation. Here is my hat. Here is my scorpion. The biology of scorpions. Very scientific. <laughs> now, as you can see here, there is a watermark. That's how it called. No, Windows Movie Maker. 
I tried to use Windows Movie Maker, but I couldn't find some programs extra that my com my computer needed. That's why I chose Filmora because my computer didn't need anything else. Uh, so uh, choose the um, program of your that suits best for you. Uh, this is a uh, it, it's it was a random choice. It was a random choice that suits our needs. Good. Now, if we want to get rid of Wondershare Filmora watermark, we have to pay for Filmora because now we use it for free. So Filmora says that if you want to use our program for free, you will show everyone that you created your video with our program. And that is fair enough, uh, I, um, I want to say, because they made uh, they are making great work. So I will play it again. I don't know if I'm able to play the MP4 file from here, but don't worry. We will open Filmora, I hope, and we can make some uh, experiments ourselves. Oh, I cannot open it. I'm sorry for this inconvenience. Uh, maybe later. Now, uh, so far, so good. Any questions? Have any thoughts? Do you think that is difficult now that you saw it? No? Nope. One shot. Nope. <laughs> good. Um, now. How we import music. How we import music. Where are we going with no music? Nowhere. So let's add some music. Well, once again, we are in our uh, big professional screen. And here, over here, down from the file, there is audio. Now, why I choose Filmora? Uh, that's another reason, because Filmora has a music library and I don't have to download anything from YouTube. The uh, Filmora has already made library uh, and I can choose from there. Uh, and it has variety. You don't have to use any other program to embellish your video with music. Now we choose audio, okay? And then here it opens the library. There is trending, there is happy and uplifting, hip hop, rock, sports, etc. You can click on the list and the list will have several melodies to choose. Now, we pick the song, the theme we like, and either you, we can click and drop it here where you can see uh, the, um, the note. Here is the audio track. Above them, there, is, there are the video tracks, but here are the audio tracks. Now you can click, drag and drop our uh, theme, or you can right click and apply. And here is what it looks like. It doesn't matter that it, there is space between them. It doesn't matter, it will play. And I will have to uh, export, um, uh, I'll, have, I'll have to exit full screen in order to show you uh, uh, my video. There is a question in the chat. Of oh, course, yeah. yes. How do we import sound? Yes, we answered that. We can add sound on the free version. Yes, that is the free version. You don't have the, all this, um, uh, ah, all these uh, po uh, possibilities, dinatotites, all these things are for free. You don't have to pay for uh, Filmora to have music. This is a free version because we ourselves aren't professional animators. We had an idea. We had the idea to make a stop motion video and uh, as amateurs, also as technicians, we used uh, a program. Yes, yeah, 
we yes you can see the presentation because we can send them to you we will send them to you this is your uh, material to uh, explore and examine anytime you want can we use our own sounds or only the ones in the program's library i'm not sure if you can do that in the free version there is my, there might be a limitation but you have to uh, see it uh, if uh, the program leaves you to uh, have your own sounds. Input sound. Tools, which is the name of, thank you for the, the, which is the name of the application. The application is Filmora, again the same, but wait a minute because I'm going to show you something else. Good, and here, in this big black professional screen, you can have a user guide. Let's say that you don't know how to do something uh, like recording your own, um, your own sounds. You can go to help, user guide, F or FNA, and the tutorials will open for you and you can make the questions now. So, as I said before, that was a random choice because of the music library mostly. Okay, our first attempt became with this application, Stop Motion Studio. It is an application. I think there might be a program. I think I saw that there is a program too. It is for free. But still, when something is for free, you don't have all the tools available. And that's it. That doesn't mean that you cannot make your video. The video, my experiment, I'm going to show you. It was with a free version. There was no tripod there or uh, and there was sunlight. I didn't even use a lamp. And that I want by that I want to, to tell you that is easy. And don't be scared to um, experiment. Now, uh, Stop Motion Studio Pro is uh, uh, the application you have to pay for, but I hope this won't be considered as an advertising. It is a very cheap application, very cheap. It is affordable and you can have all the tools available. And another, uh, a friend uh, said about Win Movie Maker, another program for free with you can download it for free and you can make with win movie maker 2024 and that was all about me now before i exit uh, full screen and show you my experiment and talk a little bit i would like you and me to relax with a great stop motion that i found <laughs> Ah, unfortunately, we have to put up with the στην Ελλάδα Direct. With the advertisement first. Yes, we are going to skip it. Yes, we are going to skip it. to exit my uh, presentation and share some thoughts and questions yeah. with you. Yes, I'm going to show you my creation. <laughs> okay, uh, can we use a presentation or we have to find it from another file? Περίμενε. Το... Ε, όχι, όχι, όχι. Μην πατήσεις. Αυτό. Πατιέται. Α, πατιέται. Περίμενε. Ναι, αλλά περίμενε. Γιατί θέλω να τους δείξω πρώτα χωρίς μουσική. Τους φίλους. Τι. Λοιπόν, 
here is my video uh, by a uh, local um, choice, local MP4. And here what it happened. Yes, Filmora opens up because you have to uh, have Filmora in order to play the video. Here it is. I will uh, move this red bar in the beginning and push play. This is with no music. I would like to uh, uh, click it again with widescreen because there are some flows in it. You will might be able to see the change of light. Here, there was a cloud in front of the sun, something that I could not control. Here, the, the picture, the frame is brighter, but in the end, the cloud came upon us. And here, you can see this shadow, this pink shadow is my finger holding the cell phone. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you to use something to stabilize. Now, uh, hmm. I will now live. Do we have time? Yes, we have. Good. I will show you now how to put music in your video. So here is our uh, track, and here is our audio track. I hope everything works. <laughs> Fine, I'll go to audio, make my choice. It is a rock choice. I want something boogie for my Scorpion. And I will choose from the library. Can you see how many options are there? Okay, okay, okay. Something good, yes, no. Ah, rock and roll. Sounds good. Now, either right click and apply or click, drag and drop here. Now you will see that it's going very, very, very far away because a video might take a long time, but my video is short. It's not that big. So I will use this scissor, this line. I will go here in the end. Okay, move my toolbar a little bit. And you see now the track is separated. I will click on it and cut it or delete it. You choose, I choose cut. Okay, so now I'll go back again. And maybe, maybe I would like some fade in and fade out effect. I clicked on the track and here is the sound tools, the audio tools. I would like some fade in, maybe a little more. And I would like some fade out. I don't know, maybe not that much, maybe a little less. Okay, I don't have to, put, to click on anything. It's okay. And now we'll click on play, just push play. And that was it. That was a small stop motion video, eight seconds and 25. Now, how any many, thoughts? How many photos? How many photos? Very good question. Thank you. Thank you for helping me. Uh, and I will show you again my secrets because I have to find the amount of photos. Give me some time. I think my photos were 35. I have them here, Photo Scorpio. These are my photos. 
there are 36. And I have erased the bad ones. May, they, I may have clicked on uh, 40 or 45. Okay. Now, any thoughts? I, I'll go again in my PowerPoint. Stop sharing if you want. Stop sharing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good and easy application. I think, no, just a minute. Now, how do you feel? Do you feel confident enough to try and make your own stop motion? I said that it doesn't have to um, uh, last five, six, eight minutes, 10. It might, you might need the small spot, like uh, the, the biology of scorpions, let's say. <laughs> so I, from me and Tip, thank you for uh, being with us. An artist is just an explorer, said Andre Matisse, and I couldn't be more agreed with him. Now, I will now let you in Yasmi's yeah. hands. Uh, Thank there, you. There are some questions. I made one small already. That's so nice to hear. I said, okay, uh, I had 36 photos. Okay, I'm sorry. Why I don't? Yeah, can you hear me yeah. now i had 36 photos i might have 40 or 42 it was a small experiment i erased the bad ones because my you can you could see my hands or my son's hands um and i had just a few photos so don't be afraid to use them and try to use the applications they're easier to use for small videos thank you so much thank you Are there any comments? It was really great. I will try that tomorrow. Because to be honest, we are working with uh, Elena together, but I had no idea what she was doing all these days here. So, um, before we finish, before we end, Okay, I would like you to remind you uh, to fill in the following form. Let's just a minute to give it, to put it in the chat, the link. Okay. Um... Great. Is it, uh, there is a question, uh, Elena, about is it possible to uh, import our voice? I, I guess because I have tried that with another program, not Filmora, um, maybe if you, um, you want to, to put your voice while it is playing, I guess this is what you want to do. I think it is possible, mm -hmm. but it's something that we didn't make a test for it. So uh, download the applications or the programs and uh, make some experiments. Mm -hmm. The link that I've sent you is the link because we need your uh, Latin, uh, your name in Latin and in Greek for the Greek participants. And uh, there are also two, three questions as an evaluation and a feedback of what we did so to improve ourselves. And but for the certificates, we will need your uh, proper name. So the form. Uh, please fill in the form so that we will have your names properly written so that we uh, issue the certificates. And we would like to invite you to the on, on Wednesday that uh, we are going to have a different uh, approach. Um, Claudia Lossi will present Animnule, which is very, very interesting. And I will uh, cover her Annie Mueller with some scientific inputs. 
but um, for this uh, webinar, you will use just paper for scratch. Um, you will need paper to tear off. Okay. Um, that was from me. Elena, you want to add something here? I would like to welcome Laura Caruso. Ah, yes, I didn't see Our her. Our colleague from Caserma Archeologica. Hi, hi to everybody. Hi, Laura. Laura is the actually the coordinator and the spirit behind Life on Mars. So she is the artist behind us. Yes. I say hello to all participants. And I invite you to next webinar. Uh, it's been great, Elena and Yasmi. Uh, yeah, I cannot wait to try uh, to experiment with uh, stop motion. Uh, then uh, for us, this, uh, this project is great. And uh, we are very happy to have so many participants from uh, everywhere. So thank you, everybody. Um, but we will see again uh, in two in two days. So <laughs> on Wednesday. Yes. Great. So, so I will. Uh, the it it has been recorded. So as soon as uh, the recording is downloadable, I will we will share it for you. Okay. Uh, the link for the certificate is. I have. I will write it again. It is a form that you have to, to fill in, this one here, because we will need your uh, these personal details in order to send you the certificates, the, your name in Greek, in Latin, and the email, of course, uh, and some questions as a feedback. So if you don't have, if you have any comments or question, we, you are welcome. All the webinars will be recorded, uh, but the certificates will be given to the people who uh, who join them actually, because they will uh, we will need this info. Yes, I. I will send the the records. Don't worry. I will send to when when you finish when you fill in the form, we will have your email and you will uh, we will send you the recordings. Mm. I don't see something else in the chat. Uh, we thank you very much. We for the Greek people we need both Greek and Latin as it is written in the um, in the ID or in the passport, because uh, the Center of uh, Lifelong Learning of the University of Crete issues certificates for Greeks in two languages. That's why we need both. You might need it in English as well. So why pay for a translation? <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. See you on Wednesday. Uh, we have a question from Francesca. This field is only in Greek. Yes, but I am in Italian and I cannot send the Google form without that field. Okay, I can uh, make the field not. Postulene, um, pochrotko. Obligatory. Obligatory. Thank you. <laughs> Our ghost voice is here. <laughs> <laughs> so that you will be able to fill it in. The Greek um, fields will not be obligatory, but please, the Greek people, uh, fill it. Fill them in. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. And see you on Wednesday. All of you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.
Iu. Γεια σα. Καλό απόγευμα. Γεια σα, καλό βράδυ. Καλό απόγευμα. Συγγνώμη για τα αγγλικά μα, αλλά έπρεπε να το κάνουμε. <laughs> Αν χρειάζεστε κάποια διευκρίνηση έτσι και αλλιώς είμαστε στη διάθεσή σας για τους Έλληνες, τώρα μιλάμε. Και αν φτιάξετε κάτι και θέλετε να το μοιραστούμε μέσω του μουσείου, να μας το στείλετε. Έχετε ε, τα Καλησπέρα. Μας. Να πω κάτι, μπορώ. Ναι, ναι. ναι. Μία αρετή. Ε, συγχαρητήρια για σήμερα. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Ε, θέλω να ρωτήσω, τώρα συμπληρώνω την αίτηση. Εγώ θα κάνω και τα αγγλικά και τα ελληνικά. Ναι, οι Έλληνε ε, και τα ελληνικά ωραία, και τα αγγλικά. Αλλιώ θα ωραία. αυτοσχεδιάσουμε στην ορθογραφία. Ε, έχω μία φίλη Ιταλίδα. Μπορώ να τη πω να το παρακολουθήσει. Την, την, ε, ειδικά γίνεται δηλαδή ε, με τον ίδιο σύνδεσμο. Ε, ε, είναι Ιταλίδα, δηλαδή είναι. Έχω, ε, έχουμε, είναι στείλει τα Zoom, είναι. έχουμε στείλει τα Zoom για τι υπόλοιπε. Ε, από εκεί που το μάθατε, ε, έχουμε στείλει τα Zoom και για τι άλλε συνεδρίε, γιατί δεν είναι ο ίδιο σύνδεσμο για τι άλλε. Ναι, 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 το ξέρω. Μπορείτε Απλώς να το μοιραστείτε. Ότι, ε, μπορεί να, μπορώ να το μοιραστώ και με Ιταλία. Δηλαδή δεν υπάρχει πρόβλημα. Για τη όχι, σύνδεση. καλά, δεν υπάρχει πρόβλημα. Α, ωραία. Όχι, όχι, ίσα ναι, ίσα. Ε, να μπει. Θα βοηθούσε ναι. όμω αν μα έστελνε κάποιο email. Καλά, άμα μπει. Θα πάρουμε τα στοιχεία. Ναι, ναι, θα το <laughs> δω αν μπορεί να σα ειδοποιήσω. Ναι, okay, μήπω την ενδιαφέρει. Ωραία. Ναι, Ευχαριστώ ναι. πολύ. Καλή συνέχεια. Καλό βράδυ. Γεια σα. Καλό βράδυ. Ε, συγγνώμη να κάνω μία ερώτηση, παρακαλώ. Ναι. Σα ευχαριστούμε πολύ για τη σημερινή όλη παρουσίαση. Να, ρω, να ρωτήσω και μάλλον να, να σα πω ότι εγώ το link το βρήκα από την αρχική σελίδα του Κεδιδίμ. Δεν έλαβα κάτι στο email μου. Ισχύει και για την Τετάρτη, σωστά. Ότι ναι, βλέπω. όλα ισχύουν, γιατί εδώ πρέπει να ζητήσω εγώ συγγνώμη, γιατί στην αρχική φόρμα δεν είχα βάλει επιλογή για να βάλετε email. Δεν πειράζει κανένα πρόβλημα. Και έτσι και μετά που πήγα να βρω, θα τα στείλουμε, τα μετά, όχ, δεν βρήκαμε τα email. Οπότε τα δεν πειράζει τα κανένα πάνε. πρόβλημα. Μπαίνουμε και από την αρχική σελίδα και παίρνουμε τα link. Σας ευχαριστούμε Ωραία, πολύ για όλα. Καλά. Καλό βράδυ. Γεια σας. Γεια σας. Εάν γνωρίζετε κάποιον ο οποίος έχει εγγραφεί ε, στην πρώτη φόρμα που είχαμε κάνει χωρίς το mail, ε, προωθήστε του τους συνδέσμους για να μπορεί να συνδεθεί στα επόμενα. Βεβαίω, με μεγάλη μα χαρά. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Και, και συγγνώμη, αλλά πάνω. Δεν πειράζει. Ξεχάσαμε το να βασικό. Είστε καλά. Να είστε καλά. Ωραία. Καλό βράδυ, λοιπόν. Γεια σα.